Welcome back to another Buckmasters Basics. Today we're back with our good buddy here, Dr. Carol Johnson, to talk a little bit more about food plots, but more specifically on the food plot side of things, we're gonna be talking about weed management and integrated weed management. We had a little bit of a kind of a gloss over, a 30,000 foot view of the topic so far, and he, here's what I've gotten out of, it so far, out of it so far. He brought a prop out here, and we, he's, he's saying that we should think about weed management as a three-legged stool. We've got cultural weed management, we've got mechanical weed management, and we've got chemical weed management. So that's what we're gonna do right now with his expertise and my ignorance, we're gonna try to walk through this process and explain what each one of those are. So integrated weed management, let's start out with cultural weed management. Cultural weed control is using the crops to the crops growth mm -hmm. to suppress weeds and to lessen the losses that they may cause. Okay. And that's manipulating what crops we choose to plant, the seeding rate, when we plant them, and how we plant them in such a way where the crop has the competitive advantage over the weed. Okay. And that is the most cost effective form of weed management is cultural weed management because after all, we are trying to grow a crop, but we're just taking that a step further, growing it in a way where it's gonna help suppress the weeds. Okay, so we're gonna, cultural weed management is about growing crops in a way that is gonna help suppress the weeds. That's right. And we're gonna manipulate the soil or the weeds themselves to try to give the crop the advantage. So That's is right. that where mechanical and chemical come in? Well then at some point along the way, mechanical weed control enters into the picture. Mm -hmm. the mechanical weed control could be tillage with a disc harrow to control weeds. It could be mowing tall weeds in a low growing crop like clover mm -hmm. to suppress those. It could be simply hand pulling. No one wants to hand pull weeds, I promise you. I've done my share of it. But sometimes that's kind of the, you know, that's the last resort and you gotta do that. Um, but we don't, we don't wanna go dwell on that too much. We're, we're, we're smarter than that. But sometimes it, it, it works out that way. But where mechanical weed control and cultural weed control kind of overlap is you disc harrow the seed bed prior to planting clover, making sure it's free of live weeds making sure every, it's clean. Well, that's mechanical weed control because you're chopping up the weeds and mm -hmm. killing them with that, but you're also creating a good seed bed for the, for the clover or any forage crop to establish, and that's cultural weed control. Gotcha, so they actually do work very much together. That's right, that's right. And I'm assuming that's where chemical weed control comes in as well, since we're talking about a three-legged stool, as it is a third leg, but, but can you define chemical weed control for us? Chemical control is simply using herbicides okay. to control weeds. Um, you got two different broad categories, selective herbicides, non-selective herbicides. Selective herbicides kill the weed, but not the crop. And that's where you have to know the weed and you gotta know the herbicide tools that you have at your disposal so you can choose the right herbicide, match it up with the crop you're growing and also the weed you're trying to kill. The non-selective herbicides are things that are done like before planting when there's no crop growing. Um, that, those herbicides will kill everything like glyphosate, for example. Mm -hmm. So if I'm trying to get grass out of a clover plot, there are ways to be able to go do that. Yeah, you know, uh, um, herbicides for that, that will control grasses in any broadleaf crop are widely available in food plot use. They're very consistent in their performance, and we'll talk about that more later in a, in a dedicated video on that. Okay. Um, but yet, you've got to be able to identify, was well, it a grass or is it not a grass? And that's where subject matter experts are needed along the way to match up the herbicide with the, with the, with the weed. Okay, and that, you know, that's, I, I guess for me in, in talking to you, and that's the reason why I want to talk to you about this, is you're the expert in this field, but a lot of what I've learned through this process is, I always think about mechanical being on the front end. We go out there, we disc it, or we till the soil, we get that going, but that's not where mechanical stops. No. It's also not where chemical stops, and it's not also not where your cultural starts or stops. It is a process throughout the whole life of that individual food plot, whether it be three months or six years, right. it requires a continued balance of this three-legged stool to be able to address the specific problem that, that you're dealing with in that food plot at that particular point in time. 
One of the points I want to get across is, um, I think it's, it's just uh, human nature to look for a magic bullet herbicide to deal with a horrible weed problem. And rarely does that magic bullet exist. These herbicides here, they're wonderful, but they aren't the total story here. You got to rely on the cultural control and the mechanical control to help the herbicides perform better. Again, the three-legged stool with 100%. each leg su equally supporting weight. Well guys, I hope that helps you understand a little bit of integrated weed management and the three-legged stool principle and what we're trying to get through. And, and we, food plots are a lot of hard work at the end of the day, and we all want to have successful food plots, but it's not just go out there, till some ground, throw some seed down, and everything takes off and looks wonderful. It's no different than anything else in life. You're going to get out of it what you put into it. Hopefully this helps you. If you need more information about food plots, don't call me. Call some of these experts from people like Whitetail Institute, and they'll be glad to help you out.